Well, good morning. This is the 6 a.m. press conference here on the CZU complex. My name is Jonathan Cox, Deputy Chief for CAL FIRE, San Mateo Santa Cruz Division, uh, and uh, line officer here on the incident. Just a few things, as always, if you could please mute your telephones here in the press conference area, take any conversations away from, uh, from the, the, the area, and also keep your masks on at all times. We'd ac appreciate it. Everybody who's speaking here this morning, they, they will be available for questions and answers at the end of the formal presentations. With that, we'll get right into the incident update here on the uh, CZU Lightning Complex. The fire this morning stands at 82,540 acres, and containment has increased to 26%, 26% containment. There are still 13,300 structures that are threatened by the fire. And we can confirm this morning that 799 structures have been destroyed. Of those 799, 11 of them are in San Mateo County and 788 are in Santa Cruz County. Uh, within that, 554 of the total number are uh, confirmed to be single family residents. We do have uh, over 2,000 firefighters that remain on scene and that number continues every day. Uh, we stand right now at 2,019 firefighters assigned to the incident. Uh, with that, I'll pass it over to uh, the team for an operational update from IMT3 Operations Section Chief Mark Brunton. Good morning. So yesterday we had a really good productive day, uh, a couple minor setbacks, and uh, last night nothing of super significance. Uh, lines were holding, um, the weather helping mitigate. Um, and uh, we believe that we're going to be moving forward with some uh, really good work today with our, uh, our plans for the day. Up on top of the fire in the north zone, fire's holding really well in Division uh, Golf and Kilo. Was able to uh, fly late yesterday afternoon, get a good look at the entire fire. Uh, up in the Butano Colony, a lot of challenges up there. A lot of the fire weakened trees are, are beginning to fall. Uh, had a structure destroyed um, yesterday from a falling uh, tree. Uh, that was fire weekend, and there's a lot of fire weekend trees in there. We're in there assessing that and uh, developing a strategy on how we're going to uh, address that issue. Um, it's throughout the fire, but but uh, we have a, a significant amount in that, that particular area that we're concerned with. Uh, fire was, was very active in that area, uh, burning down to our control lines, which is by design what we wanted to do with the winds uh, that we had yesterday. That's where the big push was. Uh, but uh, it did, it did uh, move a little bit more rapidly than we've been seeing it the past few days. That's fine. Uh, it just brings it down to the control line sooner. We have resources there uh, ready to uh, deal with that issue. And uh, so yesterday they were dealing with that. Today it's going to be another uh, big day of, of dealing with that before we have a wind shift, uh, which will push against uh, that, that advancing uh, fire front. Moving down the, uh, the coast again, we're getting more lines put in uh, all the way down to the community of, of Davenport. Uh, the community uh, we've got feel that's uh, that's quite safe. We have some good uh, lines around that. We do have fire established in San Vicente Canyon, uh, just a little bit south of that area. Uh, that's something that is a target, that is a priority for us today. We are going to be putting a lot of resources in there. We've had some limited resources in there. Uh, it's a very steep canyon, a lot of vegetation in there. Um, we have some challenges to be able to get aircraft in there because there are power lines that run through there. And uh, aircraft and power lines don't mix, so uh, we, we really can't fly a lot in there. So the ground troops are going to have to really uh, dig deep, get in there, and, and take care of business. And, and we're going to be uh, uh, hammering that pretty darn hard today. Uh, along the south, we're, our control lines are holding. We're continuing a mop-up phase there. Um, there is some smokes that pop up, but they're deep interior and some of the drainages that we just really have a hard time accessing. And they're just going to, our strategy, let those burn out, uh, burn up to our control lines and, and uh, get our uh, folks on them and to engage uh, when it is safe and appropriate to do so. Moving up the, uh, the nine corridor, uh, Felton, the community of Felton's looking really good. We had that burnout operation a couple days ago. That's uh, doing very well. Uh, the last bits of it were, were burning out, so some of the smoke that's visible from the uh, Scotts Valley area. A lot of that, that's, that's what they're looking at in, in, in piece and part is that. And then also, like I mentioned before, some of the deeper drainages, uh, that's where the smoke they're seeing is, is predominantly coming from, uh, from that community. So we're feeling a lot better about the protection of, of the community and, and uh, moving forward there. Up towards Ben Lohman, uh, Brookdale, uh, we, we ended up having um, uh, a little setback yesterday. We had about a 30 acre, what's called slop over. It's a, it's a move, uh, fire that's crossed our line. And a lot of that was due to the fact that, again, the, the, uh, there hasn't been fire history here for such a long time. Uh, the, the, the matter that's on the um, decaying matter that's on the forest floor uh, is very thick. We call it duff. Uh, you hear that term. It, it's very thick material. 
And when we put our control lines in, we, we scrape those lines down to bare mineral soil or bare soil that, that won't burn. And when you're dealing with a, this kind of environment, you really have to have those lines dug very deep. It's almost, it almost becomes a trench at some points because it's so thick. And we have to be very cognizant and, and, and very detail-oriented on that because uh, sometimes, and in this case, this is what we believe happened, is that fire was able to creep uh, slowly within that and then pop up on the other side of our line. So again, an area that has been a challenge because of the topography and the fuels in it uh, with all the homes, here's yet another challenge for us um, in when we're constructing our lines is this, this thick uh, matter that's on the floor that we have to cut through uh, so that we don't have another one of those. So we, we, we are, uh, with more people there, we're increasing our patrol of those lines so that we can detect that even sooner. Uh, but that is unfortunately something that we're just going to be dealing with uh, uh, throughout the rest of this event. The rest of the uh, line is continuing to be uh, put in play uh, up through the rest of the north part of the fire, all the way up past uh, the north of, uh, of Boulder Creek um, and tying into our division uh, kilo up there. The uh, Bonnie Dune area, again, uh, continued a lot of work to be done. A lot of work has been done. A lot of homes in there. We're working around a lot of those homes. And uh, it, it's a lot of just tedious work. Um, been a lot of questions about the, the National Guard and the National Guard, uh, we have got them here a couple days ago. So now um, we, our plan is, is we're going to be employing them in that area and it's uh, because of the, the sheer numbers that they're bringing. Um, this is actually a really good mission for them uh, because again, their, their training is of a, of a, um, a basic standard um, and that's great because that frees up our more advanced uh, hand crews to attack the other areas, like we said, the Vincente Canyon, and then also up in some of these lines here. Um, and we're going to put them to work, where, and they can do the job they do best in what we call gridding and making sure we go um, through a very thorough process through that community and make sure everything's mopped up. We have good line around where the homes and that sort of thing and, and to help render that safe. Uh, again, our road crews uh, are, are clearing the roadway so that our inspectors can get in to do more inspections. The utility companies can get in to do their work to reestablish um, the infrastructure of those communities. And uh, the Highway 236 corridor, a lot of work being, being done there and a lot of work to be done. It's, it's, uh, it's a mess, a lot of down trees and with the power lines and poles and so forth. So that's, that's a number of days worth of work just to get um, that, that opened up there. And, and they're working really hard, uh, working with Caltrans and and other resources to open that up. Uh, our aircraft, uh, we do still have the six water dropping aircraft. We anticipate that in the coming days we should see a few more of those coming in. That's going to be a big help to us. Uh, Mother Nature, if uh, she cooperates, we can get more flight time. The past few days we've had a thick marine layer. It hasn't burned off till late. Our aircraft, as I mentioned before, cannot uh, work in those type of conditions safely. Uh, so we've had to, to wait until that clears up. As soon as it clears up, on any part of the fire, we're flying those missions. And those, those uh, crews are doing a fantastic job when they're up to fly. Uh, when I was doing my reconnaissance flight yesterday, all our aircraft were up and, and going and they were, they were hammering it. Um, they were just, it was turned constantly, getting through their dip source, getting their water, bringing it back, dumping on, on the targets. Uh, so as soon as we get more clear air, we're gonna max out the hours we can on the aircraft. We're gonna be dumping hundreds of thousands of gallons on that to uh, support the uh, mission and the, and the mission of the, and the helping the crews on the ground. Uh, to uh, get another day closer to uh, completing this uh, this mission. Thank you. Up next from the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office is Chief Deputy Chris Clark. Good morning. Uh, so some good news, obviously, last night and yesterday in getting folks home in the unincorporated area of Scotts Valley. So we hope to continue that good news as these days go on. And so I would encourage people uh, to uh, pay attention, obviously, to CAL FIRE's website, to our social media, our Facebook page, uh, for continued updates with regards to repopulation. And then also we'll be discussing it uh, at press conferences. So, uh, you know, again, good news on another front. We didn't get any, uh, any further citations or arrests last night. I'll, I'll talk about the device we found yesterday here in just a moment. But, uh, but no arrests or citations, which is... Uh, which is a good thing. And another good thing is that uh, for the folks that went home last night, we had no reports of burglaries. So they came back to homes that uh, had not been broken into, which is, I mean, who would wanna, who'd wanna come back to that? And so, um, so it was good in the sense that nobody, that didn't happen. Uh, we had 56 people, uh, 56 officers and deputies running around last night. We'll have another uh, 56 today uh, with 21 of our folks, 15 from in county. 
and then 20 mutual aid. In terms of calls for service, uh, we had six suspicious people calls that, uh, that we went out to, and our missing person still stands at one. So again, we cleared up the three people we were looking for that we posted on our, uh, on our social media. Uh, and so we developed one new one yesterday. We'll be, uh, our detectives will be actively looking for that person. Uh, in terms of the device that we found yesterday, I spoke about that last night. Uh, our uh, bomb team went out there. They made, that, uh, they made that situation safe and our detectives are continuing, continuing to investigate. So there's, gonna be, uh, there's likely gonna be more to come, but, uh, but obviously we're heavily involved in, in that. Uh, and then in terms of uh, repopulation, again, I just, uh, just stressed to you to uh, just pay attention to, to CAL FIRE, uh, their website, their social media, and then our social media. We want to get people home as absolutely fast as possible, and, uh, and we're going to continue to do that. And then obviously that's, that's our mission with, uh, in combination with the security checks that we're doing so that people don't come home to, uh, to missing stuff. So anyway, that's, uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, next from the San Mateo County Sheriff's Office is Lieutenant Vince Badola. Good morning. Um, we are, have good news similar to Santa Cruz County. We did our saturation patrols overnight and had no reported burglaries in our areas. And we did have a few calls for service for suspicious vehicles that is driving slow in the area, but nothing uh, panned out. Uh, one of our volunteer crews that were there uh, volunteer sheriff's personnel called one in and then a couple residents called those in and no contacts were made with those uh, vehicles so we are happy to report that um, everything has been good safe and we are happy that our residents are getting back to their areas um, we want to again reiterate the fact that if you can please do not travel in these areas of san gregorio la honda and pescadero areas if you are not a resident, don't travel through there, please. Um, we want to get everybody into our residents, our resident areas, and we want to keep them safe and continue the efforts of getting everybody back. So please stay away. And lastly, we want to continue um, and reiterate, um, look at CAL FIRE's websites for updates, um, and then our San Mateo County Sheriff's Office uh, websites, social media platforms as well. And that's all I have. Thank you. Speaking next on behalf of all of the Unified Incident Command Agencies is CAL FIRE Incident Management Team 3, IC Billy C. Uh, good morning. Obviously, you're hearing a lot of good news about the uh, firefight out on the ground. Um, there's still a lot of areas that have uh, active flames. Uh, we're aggressively uh, getting our control lines put in place. But I want to remind everyone, this is a multi-phase situation to mitigate this incident. Uh, we have a lot of roadways that <clears throat> have damage to them. Uh, the uh, thick duff uh, is starting to burn out underneath some of these roadways and collapse the roadways. So we're going to be uh, working with uh, both county EOCs, Caltrans, and county roads to identify uh, problem areas and to uh, make them safe for people to travel. And obviously, a lot of the uh, damaged trees out there are starting to come down. So we're going to have to start removing trees that are unsafe, that potentially take out additional power lines, cross roadways, or endanger structures. So like I said, it's multi-phase when we start pushing forward with the entire mitigation process of this incident. And it's going to take a while. I need everyone to be patient. Uh, we're working diligently with both county EOCs, all the, all the uh, Caltrans and county roads, and we'll be working with the private timber companies to identify and secure all those safety hazards out there. Thank you. Our final speaker this morning, San Mateo Santa Cruz Unit Chief Ian Larkin. Good morning. Uh, progress. We continue to make progress each day. Um, as I stated uh, earlier, um, you know we're we're still got a firefight going on, uh, trying to get control lines in uh, to fully contain this fire and then make it safe for uh, residents to get back in. Um, but I want to emphasize that uh, the recovery process has already started. Um, incident management team uh, has been working diligently uh, in coordination with uh, our emergency operations centers. Uh, to give them uh, information on um, starting that recovery process. So those EOCs are working um, 
to uh, get information so that when this is over, they can get in there and uh, make those sites uh, even safer for those that have had significant damage or there's been damage to their infrastructure, roadways, uh, and such. Um, we have uh, requested a, a emergency watershed uh, response team uh, to the incident. Uh, this fire has impacted our watershed pretty significantly, uh, and they'll be putting uh, recommendations forth on how to mitigate those hazards as we move uh, forward. Um, so as I said, it's not too early to start that recovery phase. We've been working on it for uh, uh, about a week now, so um, just want to reemphasize to the public that uh, we're going to try to make the environment as safe as possible for you. Um, but on a, on a different note, I just want to remind everybody that we are just moving into our peak fire season here in San Mateo, Santa Cruz. Um, and we have an 82,000 acre fire that we're going to be continuing with uh, through that process. So for those that have not done uh, your defensible space, um, it's not too late to start. You just need to be cautious while you're doing it so you don't spark a new fire. So uh, if you can, get out there, protect your homes, and start working uh, towards uh, that defensible space. Um, for those that are still out there, it is still a hazardous situation. Uh, there are a lot of trees that are still weakened as we keep in reiterating. Uh, their root systems are inundated. Um, they have burned out underneath roadways. Uh, culverts have been damaged. Bridges have been damaged in the area. So it's going to take a little while to get that infrastructure up uh, and back to normal. So please be patient with us as we work with uh, the counties uh, to secure that infrastructure. Thank you. All right, we're happy to answer any questions you might have. This is uh, for Chris Clark, Chief, if I may, regarding the pipe bomb situation. Yeah, so question about uh, more specifics regarding the pipe bomb. Please. Chris, can you tell us whether or not this is related to uh, an organization that we've seen or an individual who is in custody now and was arraigned yesterday? Is there any, any uh, connection at this point? Uh, so at this point, uh, our investigators are investigating that. That, that. That's concerning, right, Phil? I mean, um, concerning the folks who live in the valley. You hear about, you know, pipe bombs. You hear about explosive devices, and uh, that's concerning the people who live up there. It's concerning to us. And so our detectives are going to be pouring through all of that, looking into every conceivable question with regards to why someone would be possessing that, and all all the questions of of why and. And that so we're looking into that phil is there can you be a little more specific about what was discovered yeah so um what again it, it was uh like a toolbox and in, in as i mentioned last night this really started with some uh some firefighters doing mop-up cleanup work and putting out spot fires in and around uh, kind of like the boulder creek golf course area and so uh, in doing that they ended up noticing a toolbox that was open looked down and it uh, found what appeared to be a pipe bomb and by the pictures that I looked at uh, that's that's exactly the impression I would have gotten had I looked down and seen it and so they did the right thing they backed out of the area they contacted us we uh, dispatched our bomb team and then uh, and then uh, detonated that stuff in places I mentioned last night to make it safe but that's not without taking pictures and there's forensics work to be done on that and so there's a lot our detectives are going to need to follow up on and a lot they're doing a lot they did last night and a lot they're going to continue to do until we know uh, all the like again, all the answers to those questions that I'm sure you have and uh, that we have as well. well did you uh, do a search warrant for the home, and was anything more recovered from that house? We did, and so uh, I they did execute a search warrant last night. But for the sake of the investigation, I'd love to tell you more about what they found. But just uh, f for the sake of that investigation, being able to um, answer more of the questions we have, I I, I, I don't want to release that at this time, just based on them continuing to do do work are you looking at any particular person or persons at this point or you can yeah so uh obviously somebody you know somebody built that and so somebody possessed it and so uh we're going to be and there our detectives are looking into that thank you you're welcome do you anticipate any more repopulation today i mean i know the scotts valley people probably popping the champagne bottles this morning <laughs> anything hopeful moving forward today Right. Uh, so the question is related to: Are there any more anticipated repopulations today? Uh, you want to take it, Chris? Yeah. So that's, um, you know, that's the hope. And so, you know, where we want to be specific on the areas that we're looking for, or uh, that we're looking to repopulate, because I know that if I was displaced um, and I was in an area that hadn't been repopulated yet, I'd want somebody to be standing up here telling me when can I go home. The problem is, is that. Uh, 
it's hard to do that because of the logistics of getting people in safely, efficiently. Uh, and then also, because I mean, just as just yesterday, you know, we, we repopulated Scotts Valley preceding that. We had people lining up at the checkpoints. And so it just presents, it presents logistical issues with getting people back efficiently because we don't want people sitting in traffic for two hours, you know. I mean, and especially up here, there's limited roads and limited ways to get people in. So we want to do that efficiently. And also you've got, you know, kind of the changing nature of the fires. You heard Chief Brunton mention there's a little bit of slop over in that, uh, on that fire line there uh, just north of Ben Lomond. So, so, so things can change and things, can, and things are dynamic. Um, so yes, we hope to provide updates. Yes, we want to provide uh, um, more on repopulation uh, every day and hopefully today will be similar to yesterday, but uh, things can change. What I mean is the early community is like almost there. We're almost ready to bring you back. Yeah, so those are, the, and as I mentioned, those are areas that are going from least affected to most effect, most fire affected, right? So, I mean, again, you're moving towards Felton uh, and then up the Highway 9 corridor. But again, I can't place specifics on, and as much as, I, as, much as we want to, uh, we just can't place specifics on when those people can go back home. I wish, I wish we could, but things can change. And so I don't want to give anybody, anybody false hope because I know that, um, that people want to go back home, but I, I, you know, we want to be careful on, on how we release that. Hey, Chris, to piggyback that, that, that question, um, mm -hmm. initially when uh, there were evacuees, uh, they were displaced, they were kind of filling up the parking lots here in Scotts Valley, mm -hmm. uh, and then the Scotts Valley was moved out, they were moved out. Is there a concern that um, now that Scotts Valley's open, those, those folks are gonna come back and it's kind of gonna create a bottleneck, and how will you address that? Yeah, so the question is, uh, is that, is it gonna create a congestion problem in the city of Scotts Valley for people wanting to venture further into the valley as these repopulation, or as these evacuation orders are lifted? And, and yes, I think that all of that, all that's, you know, we're looking at that. That's exactly what we're thinking. I mean, we not only is it the roadways, it's, you know, it's impacting. It could impact the city of Scotts Valley. There's still, you know, a fire operation going on and we have fire that that's made Scotts Valley their home. And so they're operating in and out of this area. And so, uh, you know, any congestion to here only makes things harder. So as I mentioned last night uh, and as you heard uh, Lieutenant Badola mentioned for the areas in San Mateo, you know, if you don't live here, don't we don't want you coming here because it just creates further it just further impacts what we're trying to do. Is there a time of day you hope to have an announcement for those who are able to maybe come back We're you know, uh, specific well, so we're hoping to stay consistent on when we release information, but again, things can change. All right, any other questions? I had a question for uh, Billy T, if I may, please. Yeah, go ahead, Bill. Um, I just wanted to find out, you mentioned of all the road damage, where, what particular area is the worst that has to be cleaned up? So the question is related to the what's the worst area that roadways need clean up? GC. The most damaged areas are going to be all the interior roadways in and around the communities. Obviously, we've got a lot of rolling material coming down on Highway 1 and a lot of infrastructure repair that needs to occur out there. But all of the impacted area is a concern. Anytime you have fire weakened trees that could cross the roadway and create damage uh, to civilians driving through there, damage to our firefighters and their equipment, or just blocking the roadway itself is a major concern. So we're having to go through and assess every inch of that line to make sure that we create a safe environment for all the people that are going to be uh, in and around that area. Can you be any more specific in terms of what might be worse than another area? Like, for example, I know Davenport Highway 1 just back there, there's issues with the rocks coming down? No, uh, honestly, when you have 82,000 acre footprint in this uh, uh, type of terrain, um, something that looks reasonably well at this point tomorrow could be another uh, changing dynamic. So we have to look at it day by day. As the ground starts to cool down, those trees, the root system, are starting to burn out. A lot of those are unknown dangers to a lot of us. So when they start coming down and we start seeing the depth of uh, char underneath the ground, that turns into a major concern for our firefighters. We're used to it. We've seen it up and down this state in many, many areas. This is just another example of Mother Nature cleaning up the forest floor 
and what we need to do to uh, mitigate some of those situations that we're presented with. All right, everybody up here is available for questions and answers one-on-one -on -one at the conclusion of this. Uh, we will meet back here tonight at 6 p.m. for another uh, uh, press briefing and update. Uh, this concludes the 6 a.m. press conference. Thank you for joining us.